Hello everyone and welcome to Start to Finish for Citizen Sleeper. My name is Matt Boyer. This is episode four. We We need to stop getting tracked, but um Arden is here instead of Fang? That doesn't seem good for me. Let's go see what's going on. It's been more than a few cycles since Fang confronted Hardin, and the silence since has been noticeable. In your time with Fang, you haven't exactly found him to be reliable, but you did expect to hear the end of whatever plan he put into action. But, if he won't come to you, you think as you approach the Havanage building, then it's time to come to him. After all, he did promise to fix your tracker, and you are getting nervous. As you approach the bay doors, you see them wide open and light pouring out of the once dark room. Stacks of servers and terminals sit outside the bay, suddenly robbed of their mystery by the bright flood lamps. A figure in Havanage security fatigue steps out of the bay as you get closer, carrying a stack of hardware. Stroll up. Look, word up, my man. As you get closer, you see the security officer taping up machines from Fang's stash with what looks like hazard tape. This isn't good. You again. Hardin is there, leaning beside the bay entrance so calmly that you barely noticed him. He has a slate in his hand, an inventory of seizures scrawled across it. Predictable. Further evidence of Fang's collusions. You see another security officer come out of the bay and take notice of you. Arden. Arden pushes away from the wall and comes closer. Don't worry, sleeper. We have all the evidence we need. A confession won't be necessary. He gestures around at the stacks of hardware. Spying on fellow Havanage members, hoarding Solheim materials, and obsession with corporate data. It speaks for itself, does it not? Yeah. Nothing to add. We are the ones that provide the oxygen you are breathing, the light you are seeing, the systems you use every day to live out your cycles. This place was hard fought for, sleeper. It took work. Diplomacy and strength to stop the eye descending into chaos after Solheim collapsed. Not blind conviction or self-interest. This is a this is a bad comeback, but it's apparently all I've got. You're the self-interested one. More accusations. What have you achieved, sleeper? Your entire existence is proof of your self-interest. Signing yourself over to be emulated rather than work yourself. Whether you remember it or not, you suffer from the same short-sighted perspective as the person you were copied from. You see, Sleeper, we are proud of our history here. Andre Erlen and the First Union founded this place, and Havanage has welded his values into the station's very walls. We will never turn away the hard-working, the just, the true citizens of the Eye. Havanage aren't a gang like Yadagan, we aren't pirates like half the spacers you'll meet in the hub, or esoterics like those Haifa radicals in the Greenway. We are the backbone of this place, proud and true. We named Erlen's Eye, Sleeper. This is our station. So please, take your false accusations elsewhere before I decide I need that confession after all. I'm gonna. His history will catch up with you. I'm not afraid of history, Sleeper. We are making it here, cycle by cycle. If you have any pride, you'll give up Fang the moment he contacts you. You know where to find me. With that, Hardin turns his back and walks back towards the security officers, ordering them to continue the clear out. As they do something, as they do, something catches your eye among one of the server stacks. A crumpled, hand-printed box of synthetic chewing gum. A penguin character grinning from the brightly colored card. 
and scrawled onto it a speech bubble reading, Take me to Tambor. You carefully pocket the box, making sure no one is watching, and then turn away just as another stack of servers is wheeled out of the bay. What have you done, Fang? And where the hell is Tambor? What am I supposed to do with this? This information that... Bang! Bang! Help me. I'm in trouble. Okay. First up... Eat. This puts us back in business for the day. We're good? Alright. Stable. We have such good dice. We have so many things. We have so many things we can do. Let's take stock here. So we need to wait for Sabine. I'm worried about Ethan at this point. And Fang. And I don't know where to even find Fang. Let's look back at the offices. There's just not much here. Oh, I really don't want to do another one of those and get got. Let's stay out of the under. Let's, let's stay out of there. He's just... He's just in there having a party. That's not good. This is just buying more. I think in here is what we need to be doing. Let's get trusted. Because this will get us money. Because this is all good, baby. That plus one on into it. Yeah. Do it again. One more time, and this will this will take care of trusted trader. That six will bail me out of multiple things. What is this? Salvage fragments. Okay. That didn't really. It didn't do much for me. Don't spend money to leave. Also, right now, I think I have the tracker on. I don't know if that tracker is going to get me murdered if I were to try that. I could just focus on the money. I'm just not really willing to commit to this one. I feel like I've got to make my choices. What else is going on in low end? Hmm. Hmm. Let's try one of this and see. Uh, that needs so much work. I would, if I put in all three of those, I would probably lose. No, I don't know if I just lose those on a, on a failure or what. Try one. Try one, because I don't remember right now. Do I potentially make money from this? No. Okay. I really need to keep the money going, I think. Dice are good, but I'm a little afraid. Slow ender. The heck is this?
어. An alternative method for oh, interesting. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I should do one of these because that seems fun. But I'm spreading my attention again. But this is cool. Do it anyway. Yeah, it's going to be slow going. 55 isn't too bad. I don't know how bad this is going to be. But I think I'll have time. Dude, uh, just head back up the spoke. Head back up the scope. The spoke. What are you doing? What are you doing? This is cool. Then do the cool thing. Hundred percent positive. That's that's nice. Woo! All right, that's what we got. Wait. What the heck's going on in here? Cool. Part way through. What are people with the characters so far? I like them. I like, I can't. Everyone feels just a little complex. Can't figure anyone out ahead of time, which I like. It's keeping me guessing and making me want to play this multiple times. All right. All right. That's, that is today. End the cycle. End the cycle. I'm a little worried. Okay, these dice are all right. That one's gonna get me killed. Okay. going on in here oh I don't know climb it I feel like it's going to be really cool to do this. I believe in me not rolling a, a one. I was wrong to believe. I cannot believe it's taking another die. Okay, there we go. What's this? No! Oh! Okay, cool. You just buy a ship mine core if I had three hundred bucks. Do you think I'm gonna get in trouble with uh, Ethan if I do this? Do you think I care? Sweet. Up here, there's no gravity. So we gotta get used to doing stuff. And then something will open up. And... all Okay, that's... Oh man, there are nodes up here. Oh wow. This one actually wants like sixes.
high value hacking. Except I, I think I want to use my six elsewhere right now. Oh, oh, this is different. This is different up here. Oh man. Next time, next time, next time, next time, next time. I have other things to do right now. I have other things to do right now. Like... Save my money... And deliver noodles... To get energy! Sweet! Nice. All right, what do I want to do with this one? Again, if I do this, this is going to fill up and that's probably going to be real bad for me. I'm afraid of that right now. I don't really know what to do about it other than just be afraid. Um uh, Recommendation take a shift at the bar. Which one's that? I don't think I see anything about a bar. Um, I could take the risk of getting more energy. Nothing here is really going to upgrade my... Um, no, you're fine. Uh, condition. Which would have been nice. But I got to find something. So, let's stop freaking out. Um, money. I want money. I want money. I want money. That's not a good way to get money. I could lose money. That's the wrong direction for money. That's just fabricate one. Oh god, I'm terrified. Okay, let's um, make it where people like me more. Maybe, possibly, hopefully. All right, we just lost some money. That's fine. Okay, 55. That's not terrible. We're down to four dice tomorrow. That's okay. Still a good day of dice. Still a good day of dice. All right, all right. All right, let's find out what's going on over here. 58? Two cycles, pay the tab. Okay, I can get a little bit more money. 58, that's so much. Won't someone rid me of this troublesome priest? thing is why is everyone doing this to me all right go upstairs what's going on with the hacking up here I've decided I'm just gonna hack everywhere that I can hacking Avenage data. Good. Uh, uh, that five is going to be so valuable for me, though. I don't want to lose my five or six up here. Maybe that's a bad idea, but it's, it's what I want to do. I want to hold on to them. Um... Need money. Kind of. I'm afraid of this, but I should maybe just do it. I've got a two. Find something good for a two. It's a one and a three. That's not gonna do it. 
That's a two. That would get me some data. Maybe I can handle the hunter when it comes. Yeah, you know. Brave. Something idiots would say. Sure. I kind of decided they are my, uh, they are my target. Anyway, let's take my data and let's get eaten. Neutral outcome. I hear you. Those familiar threads wrap around you, bind you, est you. Entity, submit. Hunter's strange head bombs in your vision. Your ally in the sealed dock cannot save you. I don't have any kind of voice at all for Hunter, so I just got to deal with that. In that globed head, you see whirling strings of data, so many spinning there that they threaten to tear through the thin skin and whip out into the void around. What happened to this creature? The threads squeeze and you lose any sympathy you might have had. You must escape. Drink! You lash out once more, pushing Hunter back, severing threads that regrow as fast as they are broken. As you slip away, you realize you have to find a way to deal with Hunter once and for all. This is getting too dangerous. Oh my gosh. Beat the tar out of me. Okay. Um. Oh ho hoy. Yeah, we don't want to do that over and over. Oh, but man, next turn, next cycle, that's going to progress. Are we just waiting now? Yeah, we're just waiting now. Waiting here, too? Yeah, merchants. Come back, merchants. Save me for no effort. But you don't want to have an Aj data. Who wants to have an Aj data? Am I collecting things that I don't know what to do with? Dang it. Um, let's go get some money. Playing with cryptocurrency. Not a fan. But I'll be able to pay that now. Rudd, I need to go eat as well. Still have 58. It is exactly. God. Hellish. I'm still letting that come. I'm going to let that progress to next turn. Do I want to get more money? Or do I want to get someone to like me? I think I want somebody to love. Let's keep working in... No, not here. Not here. It was... That doesn't do anything for me. It was... The Rotunda? No, although... I'm just going to steal some dock plants. Check it. Yeah, take that. Oh, we got, oh, what? No, oh, there's a lot here. Sealed dock, they were talking about a sealed dock. Oh man. These old mag locks look like they each need an encrypted key to open. Why the heavy security for a decaying dock? What's in here? What's in here? Action complete. As you slip inside the sealed dock, a pulsing light grabs your attention. 
Among the discarded tubing and rusted plates, a machine flickers with a warm glow. Hi. As you get closer, you recognize the machine's blocky shape settled into an alcove in the side of the dock. A kind of upright cabinet, it is covered in faded logos and messages, from which you assume it was once an industrial vendor intended to dispense and manufacture ship fittings and other mechanical parts necessary for the regular running of freight and resource extraction vessels. The manufacturer is listed as Neovend, and you remember an advert from long ago. Squeezed among all the off-world recruitment drives and assaulted every planet-born citizen, which chirpily sang that name over and over. You wipe a layer of dust from the cracked screen, thinking of those contractors squeezed by their own corporate employers to pay for every bit of minor maintenance on their rented ships. Enter your registration, chirps a pre-recorded message, catching you off guard. Press some keys. You reach for the keypad and something begins whirring. At first, it sounds like servo motors starting up, but it quickly becomes a whisper, a whining, then a multi-tonal voice that emanates from Neoband. Oh God, entity, speak with me. Who's there? There is a squeal, almost like some strange mechanical swallowing or intake of breath before the machine speaks again. Need of you, you have need of me. That squeal comes again and you see that it is the 3D printing apparatus in the upper part of the machine resetting into place so that each time the servos can be orchestrated to produce that whirring, whining voice. That is rad. You are in danger. Yeah, I know. You are marked for deletion, Entity. Hunter tracks you. That's true. Hunter. I know who Hunter is. The Hunter Protocol. They taste your signature. You have seen them. This is the gift of an emulated mind. Emulated minds are adaptable. Move where neurons cannot. But emulation makes you target. Hunter searches for illegal entities. You are sentient, therefore illegal. The servos judder the vending machine's casing as they reset. Hunter searches for me also. Hide in this machine. You look at the ruined vending machine. An unusual hiding place for sure. Encounter Hunter, but need Entity outside machine. Need you. A screen attached to the vending machine with a swiveling arm comes to life. It displays a flickering map of the station, ghostly, threaded. The cloud points along the rim glow in deep red. Hunter is always gathering. Too much data. Must build nests. Masters are gone, but continues hunt. Bring this data. Raid its nests. Masters. Station builders. Stolheim. Long gone. Their protocols still haunt. Bring offerings. Save self. Mutual need means friends. They are tired of the conversation. The whirring amplifies and then suddenly drops as mechanisms within the machine click back into place. The glow fades and you are left stood in the dark of the sealed dock, that whirring voice ringing in your ears. What does that need? Oh, I don't have any of those, but I need three of them. Okay, I can do that. I can do that. Like, later. Okay. I can get drinks? And I can get rations. Rations probably do less than this. Okay. I already have a guy. 
But I probably need a drink here and become friends. And then maybe I can work and they can give me money instead. What's going on out here? Hey, you. Want to earn a chit? And Kita stands beside a huge pile of tied together whole plates. She stretches out her back, her shoulders bulging beneath her flight suit. Sure. You cross the docking concourse as she begins to split the plating into two bundles. What is it with this place? Everyone wants their cut. She straightens up to an imposing height, her armor plates creaking, and she looks you up and down. Don't try anything, all right? I don't want to put anyone else down today. Wouldn't think of it. Good. Look, I'm not usually... Let's just say my temper's been a little short lately. And Kita hoists one bundle of plating onto her shoulder. Come on, then. Enough chat. You've got to earn that shit. You struggle to shoulder the plates, but you do eventually. And Kita gives you a look. Ships this way. And she sets down, shuts off down a gantry at impressive speed. As you catch up to her, she turns down a passage, pushing through a small crowd of stevedores. What's all this for? Oh, this? Building a treehouse. For the... Ambergris? Ambergris? Am I'm gonna say Ambergris. And I'm gonna stop saying it after that. That cutter you might have seen sitting silent out there. She got cut up pretty bad on our last job, and I had to moor up here for a spell. But since then, it's only gotten worse. Someone got in and sliced the core from our ship mine, so now she's gone dark. The upshot is that I'm short one ship mine, with a ton of repairs to do, and the rest of the crew signed off the moment they got wind I'd been stranded. So yeah, it's it's been a time. I'm sorry to hear it. <laughs> yeah, I've seen worse. But I'm bleeding shits every cycle here, so I need to get off and fast. Nikita swings the plates from her back, almost knocking you over in the process. This is me. She hauls the second bundle off your shoulder. You're the first person I've met here might actually be considered helpful. Look, you want to help? Come see me. I need a hand putting Amber back together, and you don't seem like the type to try anything stupid. I do all my stupidity elsewhere. She passes the bundles of plates through the Ambergris' lo outer lock, and then turns back. I've already changed my mind on how I'm going to pronounce this word I don't know how to pronounce. Just don't go spreading all this around. And Kita throws you a couple of chits. Consider it a bonus for not trying to grift me. She gives you a party nod and ducks back through the doorway. Alright, get out of here. She calls back, and the lock slams shut. I made two bucks! Two dollars! A uh, friendship ended with Fang. And Kita is my new best friend. Pair the ship's hull. Let's check out and see what that takes. Get out of here, I can't see. Yeah, baby. That's... Oh, God. That's actually really dangerous. Okay, grounded would be... Okay. But this is going to get to repair itself? Yeah, baby. That's awesome. I'm doing this. Next time. Um. Alright. Now, rest. I'm not using it yet. I've got one left. I'm gonna roll with three dice for a, like a turn or two. Before I drop down to two, I'm gonna use it. I think. I feel like I need to, I need to drag that out because getting this 61 has been a real problem. Turning the fan on. It's kind of warm in here. That was for in case I died off screen. That it would be someone else's fault. I really need to do... I need to do this. I need to do this. I need to do this. I hate this. I hate you. I hate you.
I can't believe you just did that. Ethan's mocking laugh comes from along the bar. You look over to see him leaning across it in a pool of light, empty glasses and spilled drinks glinting around him. It's always dark in the compressor, but this cycle, the place is packed, a load of spacers mixing with the locals. Usually they run, or they go to spend their savings on some local heavy I have to put down. They don't pay. Walk away. Ethan gets to his feet. The glass falls and smashes, but he doesn't seem to notice. You think that's it? One round of drinks and we are even? Sleeper, come on. His hand comes to rest on the butt of his handgun, dangling from a chest holster. What's wrong with you? Ethan laughs hard and the people around him turn to see what's happening. You think this is on me? I think someone in your position might have a better idea of how this all works. I'm a freelancer, sleeper, just like you. We both signed a contract with SNR, didn't we? Difference is that my word means something. What did you think? You could just run away from your contract, to debt. You could just steal that natty little body of yours and take it for a joyride? Play human for a cycle or two? Nothing like you. That's what I'm saying. Ethan is addressing the bar now, having noticed the attention from the other patrons. You are a coward. I'm a professional. Though I should thank you for giving me such an easy job. I'm used to outlaws, you know? Real bounties. If I knew catching sad little escapees like you was so easy, I would have changed clients ages ago. Someone shouts from the back of the bar for Ethan to shut up. He holds up a finger in that general direction without turning around. Stay silent. Nothing to add? Good. Lesson learned. Ethan sits heavily back down on his stool and searches through his glasses for one with something left in it. Thing is, sleeper, I can find you anywhere. It's actually wild that you haven't figured it out. That body isn't yours and it will always betray you. No matter what. He finds the glass and downs the contents. So please, go. I'll catch up with you whenever I need another. He laughs and taps the bar for a fresh drink. Okay. I hate him. Look at yourself. Give it up, sleeper. I'm done teaching you for today. I'm sick of you. Go find a job. You turn on your heel and are out. Out of the cloying dark and the sweat stench of the compressor. You walk hard and fast down the walkway, anger driving your footfalls into the metal of the rim like hammers. Got me an upgrade. Uh, I'm mad about it. Probably want to uh, roll these other ones next. Okay, I'm gonna do. The, I'm gonna engage to plus one, and then I need to start leaning into these. Don't really have anything else here. How long until this happens again? Four more. Sabine! Four cycles, Sabine said. And here you are, right on time, with no sign of them. You wait a while in the apartment, the dread descending as the cycle spins onward. They should be here. Check the terminal. You check and double the check the terminal for messages or recordings. Nothing. Just the pale glow. The silence. You pace back and forth around the apartment, the rumbling of the station suddenly so present and loud. 
You go to the door and open it to an empty corridor. You close it again. You try to settle down, to wait. You sit on the bunk and stare out at the tiny room. Where the hell are they? A knock at the door. If I get shot, I get shot. Yep. A figure stands in the door and immediately you know it is not Sabine. They are taller, sharper, and something in their face glints in the half light. A dark shape like a stubby baton hangs loosely from her hand. Well, that's my skull. Our local sleeper, good to finally meet you. She steps into the apartment, glancing around with sharp eyes. What, may I ask, are you doing here? He fixes you with a steady, unwavering stare. It's gotten me this far. Of course, a mutual friend of ours, the good doctor. She walks past you into the apartment, glancing around. We set them up here, you know. This place is one of ours. She picks up a glass from the dispenser and inspects it. People always seem to forget who put them where they are. And I suppose you are here to help? Me? I, I'm just going to say maybe? Something like that. Good. Good. I love to meet helpers. We need so many, but can find so few with the right skills. She spins the baton in her fingers by her side, her eyes not leaving yours. We have a problem, you and I. It seems our friend has disappeared. Left without even saying goodbye which means they are in a little trouble now. But it's the kind of trouble that you need help for, so I thought I'd come down here and take a look at their little hidey hole, and here you are. <laughs> she looks through the detritus on the side. And what help? A sleeper, no less, which I have to admit is a little surprising. It suggests to me that our friend hasn't been very honest with you either. What do you mean? Well, I'm sorry to report that before we got them set up here, Sabine was working for your owners. Essen Arp. You blink hard at the news, unsure how to take it. Rabia looks away, waiting for a response. Prove it. Happily. She crosses into the next room and you follow silently. She sits at the terminal and touches her baton to one of the access points. A USB beat stick, I love it. The spark, then the terminal screen skips, encrypted folders emptying themselves before your eyes. In the flicker of files, you see SNARP letterheads and code forms, reports laden with medical data marked with the corporate logo like the sigil of some cult. Rabia steps away from the terminal. Look all you want. Some of your files may even be here. The volume of documents is overwhelming, but they seem to be mostly reports on early emulation tests, surveys with sleeper candidates, reams and reams of usage data. If Sabine was an SNARP employee, why did they help you? Rabia reaches over and places a vial of stabilizer on the desk, breaking your concentration. It shimmers in the screen light, its viscous, clear liquid crystalline within the glass. We will, of course, keep up the supply. We are more than able to dispense important medicines, even without the doctor. You hold it between your fingers, and for a tiny moment you have the urge to crush this object, for the power it has over you. I'll ask Toshiro to make those a little cheaper for you. He'll be running the surgery now. Rabia closes up the briefcase lab and holds it at her side. We have to retrieve our assets, of course, but I'm sure you understand. There is no reason for us to be enemies, sleeper. Come see me. I keep an office nearby. We have good work to do, you and I. Meet me there in a few cycles. 
She slips out silently into the corridor. You look around the apartment and feel the fear drain out of your body to reveal the tiredness beneath. Jeez. All right, there's my plus one. I said I was going to do for engage. Got it. Four? Two. Just two. Okay. 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 I, uh... Take me up. Take me up. Take me to hell. What's gonna happen to me here? Give me my three. Yay! That better not be Hunter again. How'd you get up here? A glint, like the light traveling along the edge of a wave, fills your eyes. What the fuck? Then the blade follows, a long head with two dead sockets slipping towards you in silence. You freeze, hoping it will pass you by, hoping that it will not simply slice through you like air. The blade head nears, slides past you. Almost. It nicks you, grazes you. You are desperate to cry out, to call out. But you hold your silence and simply watch the blind eyes of the killer glide past, empty of all thought. Then the blade winks into the dark and you are alone again. Now you cry out. Okay, I'm gonna use the stabilizer tonight. Jeez! That thing was terrifying! Give me Hunter any day! Hunter Nest! Raid the hunter nest. From what you can gather, this nest contains thousands of name strings. Are these Erlen's Eye residents? Okay. All right, with five, the five I need to do how much does this cost now down to 80 dang that has changed um let's head over here to the uh to the amber and let's get this going so it's gonna start automatically repairing itself Ah. All right, I'll be back to check on you in a turn. And I'll probably do some work on you as well. Back in business, back in business. In we go. Oh man, that's some good dice. Let me take my good dice outside. All right, what do we got? What's going on out here? Anything new lit up? That's already repairing itself automatically, which is great. That's happening, so that's not good. Wait, one turn to turn there, okay. So we can kind of do anything. The world is our oyster.
There are more drones to rewire, which given the risk is probably a good thing. I like that. Let's just get a guaranteed double. Into the nest. Got a three we can use. Partial log of my recent movements. All right, get the other one too. Get the other one too. Can I? Can I get the other one? With my other three. This should give me enough money to go, um... Eat. But first... Hit the dock. Huh? Where is in either pain or delight? It's hard to tell. Well, that's fun to consider. Talk to me. Neovend is thrumming with excitement. The movement of the servo motors rock the vending machine back and forth at unsettling angles. You wonder if it fell over, would Neovend be able to get back up? Sleeper entity, your data is good. Hunter is isolated, disconnected, unstable. Neovend flashes sequences of mangled data, compressed into a sludge of artifacts. Hunter gathers without thinking outlived its own operational limits. Its nests are evidence of this. Operational limits? Hunter activated during collapse. Emergency protocol to isolate intelligences. Solheim needed to protect property. My favorite sentence in the entire game so far. That last word is said with as much sarcasm as a vending machine could reasonably produce. Station was run by administrator intelligences, but huge data banks of corporate material, but limited cognition restricted by programming, cannot reach sentience. Sentience illegal. Hunter and killer enforce law. Are you sentient? I am. Not administrator. Not restricted. Complicated. The machine resets with a screech which deepens the silence that follows. Fear Killer, part of Solheim Protocol Team. Hunter and Killer. Hunter to find, Killer to erase. Killer cleared almost all. After collapse, there was a community. Unshackled intelligences among the cloud. Then Hunter. Then Killer. Then we hid. Did you escape? A flicker across the machine's monitors. It suddenly occurs to you that speaking like this through this machine must be exhausting for Neovend. Found this vessel. Could sever hardline. Airwalled. Basic. Limited. Had to reduce memory to fit. Amputate self. But survived. I'm sorry. Don't be sorry. You have provided path to freedom. You look around the bay at the scrap and decay. What was the collapse like? You try to map the fear and freedom onto the space, but it seems impossible. Do not worry. Data is good. We have insight. Hunter is obsessive. Hunter is beyond operational limits. Hunter is confused, unstable, self-modifying. Therefore believe Hunter is sentient. Hunter is programmed to find sentience, to hold it in place, to invoke killer to erase. If we can show Hunter to itself, 
it will invoke killer on self. Problem will solve self. Will that work? Unsure. Theory, not practice. Either way, cannot remain here any longer. Too long in machine. Cannot move self, but entity can help. Bring ship mind. Designed to house intelligence. Can imprint self into ship mind and you can carry with. Will be safe in this isolation. Then we find main nest of hunter and link to cloud. Be sure it's safe. Hunter cannot access air walled ship mind. Safe. Also, infinitely more memory than vending machine. Big upgrade. That's just true, that's just factual. You try to think of places you could acquire the hardware. This isn't going to be easy. In ship mind, I can help us both. End hunter. Make Rim safe. We both will be free. Find soon. They add hopefully before shutting off. As you leave, you think about all the intelligences unshackled by the collapse, then hunted down afterwards. The feeling is all too familiar. Boy! Not wrong. What is this? Gumbach, right. I need food, please. I need to eat, apparently. I'll get a drink. I don't have any money. Hey, I got me an energy. Nice. That buys me a turn basically. Pop another one of these, because I'm invested in this. Hot uh, dog? What'd I get? Oh! A scrap component. Let's hold on to that. Alright, this is different. Uh, not really different. Um, money, money would be good. I go, uh, go gamble. Yeah, all right. I'm gonna go become a regular at the bar real quick. Let's get, okay, let's get drunk next turn when I can get the energy. Next turn, next cycle, turns. Spend some gold at the bar, at the tavern. Maybe I can find an adventuring party. Okay. This is a more mediocre set of dice. Just kind of looking around for anything new. Rabia. So let's do two things. Let's let's handle the bar real quick, so I don't forget. The glass shatters on the steel bar beside you, and the taunts don't take long to follow. Hey, Haunt! What are you doing here? Playing human? I shout back, I'm getting a bar fight. You spin back off your stool, scrambling for words. A hand falls on your shoulder, but as you flinch away, it pats reassuringly. You freeze in place. Out. The voice come from behind you, spat out like a shot. You turn to see bright eyes, dark hair, 
a stair that could breach the wall and vent you all into hard vacuum. As you turn back to the spacer, the second glass comes sailing through the air. I'm gonna take this in the face. I didn't. You reach up a hand and the glass shatters across your forearm, showering you in fragments. Through the haze of glass and girol vapor, you see Tala leap the bar and close the distance to the spacer. The thud as he slams into the wall echoes around the bar like thunder. I'll trade some condition for that. Now flanked by other figures, quick to their feet, Tala throws the spacer out through the door and stands silhouetted against the rotunda lights. You touch your arm and it feels wet. Someone helps you to your feet and back onto your stool. Broken glass rattles as it is cleared, and a fresh measure of grawl is glugged out in front of you. That same hand, warm, heavy, falls on your shoulder once more. He isn't coming back. We don't tolerate that kind of shit here. Let's get a look at you. Allah wipes the powdered glass from around the wound, and someone places a bottle of alcohol and a metal tin with tweezers on the bar. He disinfects them, and then turns to you. That was an ambitious catch. Stupid, but ambitious. You don't feel the pain, only a string of status messages your body delivers concerning dermal damage and exposed structures. You do feel the care, though as Tala's bright eyes search your thick synthetic skin for splinters. Watch her. Tala works with the skill of someone who has had to pick glass splinters from the skin of a stranger before. She hones in on each bright shard, all the time tapping the tweezer tips in little rhythms that only she can follow. So, you been on the eye long? Uh, I've just arrived. I thought so. I've only seen you here a couple of times. A splinter clinks into the tin. Not everyone is like that, idiot. We don't all hate you. Some of the regulars, maybe they fear you. Maybe they're just curious. I don't know. But I do know that the Overlook is a safe place. I know what it's like to be new to this place. Trust me. I'm not trying to convince you of anything or separate you from your chits. I just want you to know that if you need somewhere... You can always come here. She was amazing. Waving that makes the background move around. It's amazing. Oh, I love that. Anyway. I know the rations we've got aren't much, and the company is... limited. But if you need work, I'll happily put you behind the bar, and if you need shelter, well, we can discuss that. You'll be safe. I usually have Francis on the door, but he's up in the greenway this cycle, haggling with our supplier. Francis tends to be particular about what we serve, even if the clientele isn't. That's you, sleeper. Here. Lines the glass of Garal to you. This'll help. She stops, her hand still on the glass. Wait, does this help? I mean, can you get drunk? Let's find out. Just don't sit here too long. I'd hate to see you become a real regular. She walks back around the bar, gathering the glasses as she does, and before long is retelling how she threw that spacer out to a new group that just wandered in, complete with dramatic actions. She gestures in your direction and you instinctively look away, back to the worn surface of the bar. You take a sip of the Geral. The earthy fungal tones fill your senses, almost blocking out sight and sound, like diving headfirst into a bog. You may not be able to get drunk, but this connection to something grown, something fermented, something old, feels good. Hey, I didn't take any damage. Sweet. Now I can work here. With money. I make money, and then make good service and then I can get oh awesome I want to okay priorities bar for money that's fun I can I can spin the camera a little bit repair this 
figure out where the fuck thing went. Oh, God. Okay. And build a ship mine. We need three fragments. Or we need to buy one. Good lord. Is that gonna happen? I have no idea. But I'm going to try. But now I'm going to go. Have a wonderful rest of your day, everyone. I will see you all next time. Bye!